Hello and welcome back to the Tomarosa. This is a video that I've wanted to do for a very long time. It's actually a two part video. So the first part is on my family's trucking heritage. And if you've watched previous videos, especially the 12 videos, you may have picked up on some of it. But this video is dedicated totally towards that. And I have tons of old truck photos uh, from my family. So I figured we'd just go through some old photos and look at some cool old trucks and talk about it. And then stay tuned though, because part two will be about me getting my CDL, my commercial driver's license, which was a big thing for me. It's part of my family heritage as well. So I wanted to take some time and talk about that. This is one of the earliest photos I have. You can see it's dated 1947, and this was from my grandfather. You can see there's uh, some old trucks in there. A couple are labeled fish, and uh, one's labeled milk. So we actually started hauling milk in 1946, but my grandfather started trucking long before that. In fact, when he was just a little boy on the farm, uh, he was visited regularly by the Standard Oil truck. And one time he asked the driver if he could drive the truck, and the driver let this little boy drive this oil truck just down the driveway. And my grandfather said after that he was hooked. He wanted to be a truck driver. So uh, him and my great uncle, his older brother, started trucking. Uh, and they were unfortunately interrupted by World War II. Uh, my grandfather was drafted. And then after the war, uh, my grandfather picked it back up and uh, started hauling milk in 1946. This is a photo my grandfather took, probably in the early 1950s, uh, on a road, trying to pick up milk. And even my dad, even in later years, would often comment how he chained up his truck more in the spring than he did the winter. But uh, trying to get to some of these farms up in the mountains, it would be a challenge. This was February 9th, 1954, at the Thema Ferry Landing on the south bank of the Ponderay River. And uh, my grandfather's milk truck went in the river. Uh, the county claims he slid down a uh, icy approach, but my grandfather said that he was actually pulling onto the ferry, and the operator was intoxicated and pulled the boat away from the landing before he was uh, fully on. And uh, being February in North Idaho, the river was quite cold, and my grandfather said that the worst of it was that he had to swim back out to put the truck in neutral so they could uh, pull it out with wreckers later. Uh, my grandfather hauling milk all up along the uh, Ponderé River during that time uh, had to use many ferry boats and uh, substandard bridges, and so he'd often carry a life jacket under his seat. We skip ahead a few decades now to 1973. This is shortly after my dad started driving. Uh, he took this picture on his North Idaho milk route. And the truck is red and white because my family hauled for the Carnation Company. And so my grandfather thought the truck should be red and white. Uh, you'll notice the spare tire uh, in the carrier there on the truck. Uh, the truck here had biased tires back then. and. It wouldn't be uncommon to have, you know, two, three, four flats just on a single milk route. And uh, my dad used to say that those old biased tires would suck the nails out of a fence post as you drove by. But uh, my dad got tired of changing tires, and so one day, without my grandfather's permission, uh, he went out and bought a whole set of radial tires for his milk truck. And uh, my grandfather was pretty fired up after that, but uh, eventually saw how superior they were and uh, forgave him. And uh, that was uh, one of my dad's uh, early uh, introductions into trucking. Here's one of the rare photos we actually have of my dad picking up milk on a farm. In this photo, uh, we see that the red and white truck we saw in the last few photos is now blue and white. Uh, it's also a good photo where you can see that it is a 1973 Kenworth W900. It's the 50th anniversary edition, so it has the gold hood ornament. Uh, but my family switched from red and white to blue and white when my dad joined. I think my dad liked the blue and white better. So when that 1974 uh, cab over K100 was ordered, they ordered it in blue and white and subsequently repainted the red and white truck into blue and white as well. And uh, ever since then, the trucks have been blue and white. 
And finally, we have that same 1973 Kenworth, which was number 226, here in about 1988. And they took this picture right when they were getting ready to trade it in uh, for a new truck. And I know the odometer rolled over at least once on this truck before they turned it in, uh, so it had over a million miles on it. This is that 1974 uh, Kenworth K100. And I'll tell you, even myself, I put a lot of miles on that truck with my dad. Uh, one of my favorite memories was uh, every once in a while, instead of hauling milk back into the carnation plant in Spokane, we'd take it up to the Pondere Cheese Company in Sandpoint, Idaho. And it was usually in that truck. And then on the way back to Spokane after unloading, we'd pull the truck over at the Grizzly Drive-In in Newport, Washington and get a cheeseburger. And uh, that... That drive-in is also the first place I saw a plaster cast of a Bigfoot track, so I was hooked. That truck number 235 stayed around the company for a long time. Eventually, my uncle took the truck mount tank off of it and converted it into a semi-tractor. There was one time uh, my little brother, myself, and my dad were all on the milk truck, and we were down in the Yakima Valley in the summertime, and it was extremely hot. And we broke down, and it was over 100 degrees down there. And this was before cell phones or anything, so uh, we actually hitchhiked back to a rest area. And we called my uncle, who uh, was able to bring down this tractor, number 235, uh, to come get us and the two trailers of milk that were attached to the broke-down tractor. Uh, but he had his son with him, my cousin, so... Uh, from the Yakima Valley all the way back to Spokane, it was my uncle, my dad, and three of us kids in this tiny day cab cab over tractor. This is truck 220, another Kenworth cab over, and it is not blue and white. And that's because the family needed a tractor pretty darn quick, and they didn't have time to spec and order one. And so they just bought one off the lot. These are actually a couple of photos that my mom took, and I thought they were pretty cool because it actually shows my dad driving 220. 220 still exists. In fact, it sits in a junkyard just a few miles from our farm, and as you can see, it was eventually repainted into with blue and white. This is truck 222, and it was a 1982 Kenworth, and I also had a lot of miles in this truck growing up. I always considered it to be my truck because... It was built in 82, and uh, so was I. This is that same truck on the cover of Milk and Liquid Food Transporter. My mom took that photo. This is truck 224. Uh, this was actually the truck that was ordered to replace that uh, 1973 Kenworth uh, that had the truck mount tank. And this one originally had a truck mount tank as well. And then uh, my uncle later took that off and made it a semi-tractor and added the sleeper, which I think was actually a Kenworth sleeper he made work. At CDL school, whenever I had to practice my 90 degree alley docks, I always thought of this photo. Uh, I took this photo, but my dad put the truck where it was at, and it was a 90 degree uh, alley dock. He had to back in around a corner, and then he had to back down the alley about three quarters of a block. This is truck 212, and Virginia actually took these two photos. And it's pretty much the only photo I have of me doing anything with a milk truck. I'm picking up milk uh, near Cheney, Washington here. These are just a couple of uh, photos that I took uh, when I was riding on the truck with my dad, picking up milk in eastern Washington. Of course, this video would not be complete without a couple pictures of 12. So here we have a black and white photo, and that is not snow, my friends. That is ash from the Mount St. Helens eruption. So this photo was taken, I think, the day after, I think May 19th, uh, 1980. Here I am as the proud new owner of 12, a 1971 Kenworth K100. Uh, this truck uh, was built in 71 for a company called Bruce Motor Freight out of Iowa. And they eventually sold it to a different milk hauler in Sunnyside, Washington, which my family bought out in 1979. Uh, when they bought them out, they got this truck as part of the deal. Uh, my family ran it for a few years, and then in 86, my dad bought it from the company as his personal truck for side jobs. He kept it for a few years before eventually selling it again. 
Uh, Virginia and I found it in 2015 by accident, and in 2016 we bought it. It was in pretty rough shape when we got it. I've done quite a bit of work to it. I still have a lot to do, but slowly but surely I'm getting it back to where it will be road worthy and that's the goal. So here it is uh, last year. I've even done some work since this photo was taken, but uh, more to come on 12. I recently got my CDL, my commercial driver's license here in Washington, and that was a pretty big thing for me. And it was a pretty big thing for the family too, because I had to take a month out of farming and Virginia did an amazing job holding down the fort uh, while I was gone. But I just wanted to talk about the school a little bit and my experiences and my thoughts on the whole whole thing. So when I wanted to get my CDL, I looked around at some local schools because I didn't want to be too far. And to be completely honest with you, my first criteria was, do they take the GI Bill? And it was actually the second school I talked to. They were like, yep, no problem. Uh, we take the GI Bill and they made it super easy for me. I didn't have to worry about anything. So that's the school I went with. It was Dry 509, which is based in Spokane Valley. 509 is the area code for Eastern Washington. That's the significance of that number. But uh, I really enjoyed my time at Dry 509. It was a four week class, whereas some of the other schools were only three week. And they did obviously prepare me for the test, the state test, because I passed that. But I really liked how they went above and beyond just teaching to the minimums. I think that's partly why it's also a longer school than the others. Uh, we did things that aren't typically taught at schools. And even in my own experience, I've seen drivers who don't have experience, for example, chaining up. Whereas we chained up every week. And so they have beautiful facilities. Uh, their trucks are pretty good trucks. I mean, I understand that if it's a truck driving school, they're going to take a beating. I mean students are hard on the trucks but they were well maintained and uh, the entire fleet was international actually and uh, I just I really enjoyed my time there the instructors were all great and I learned a lot and when it was time for my state tests I was nervous of course but I felt well prepared and I passed it and now I have my commercial driver's license I also have endorsements for doubles, triples, and tankers. And now uh, I'm just another step in my family's legacy, which means a lot to me. So why did I choose to get my CDL? Um, I do have 12, and technically, uh, as a farmer, I can drive it without having a CDL. Uh, there are some caveats, some mileage restrictions and stuff. And as an antique truck, I can also drive it without a CDL um, with some caveats and restrictions as well. I will, I will add that there was quite a few other farmers in the school getting their CDLs even though there is an exemption for farm vehicles and I, I've always suspected that some of those exemptions are going to go away in the future and maybe they suspected that as well um, but you know that wasn't the sole reason. Uh, for me getting my CDL. So in the future though, maybe I'll put 12 to work. Um, you know, I am a, a dairy farmer first and foremost, and I love dairy farming, uh, but you know, the, the trucking heritage runs in my blood and I'm very proud of that. And you know, trucking does kind of shoehorn in with farming at certain times. Uh, and there may be a future uh, with 12 or maybe even another truck and uh, I just want to be ready. Before I go, I just wanted to show you this awesome photo and that's actually my dad driving. And I wore this jacket on this special occasion because it also sports that same photo. So thanks for coming along with me on this journey through uh, our trucking heritage and we'll see you next time on the Tomarosa.